So while I'm waiting for my machines to arrive, I'm just gonna go ahead and start on the renovation of my house. I'm starting with the laundry room, which is the smallest room in the house, but I can knock this out with the tools that I have. So that's what we're gonna do and try to do some fun features. When we bought this place, Ashley was like, you can do whatever you want, trim it out however you want. Just try to do it one room at a time because as you know, if you're trying to renovate and remodel while you're living in the space, it can be pretty demanding. So starting with a small project like this laundry room should be a nice warm up for what's to come. And as you can probably tell by the looks of my miter saw here, I'm not starting this today. This laundry renovation was actually started several days ago because it took a lot of demo and prep to get this room ready for the plans that I have for it. So to catch you guys up to speed on what I've done to this room so far. So far, I've removed cabinets, tile, drywall, joist, installed new joists, raised up the ceiling, patched up the drywall where the old ceiling line used to be, whitewashed some 1x8 southern yellow pine shiplap boards, and I'm actually down to the last row on those boards right now for the install, so I'm going to show you guys what I got. So making your way through the shop, you'll walk through this door and the first room you're going to walk into is the room I've been working on, the laundry room. And you can see I've got my whitewashed shiplap boards up there. And I actually put a clear matte polyurethane on these, so these are protected and this is the finish of them now. If I don't like the final product of the whitewash with how everything goes together, I'll probably just paint these white. But so far, I really like the look of the whitewash, how you can see that grain coming through. And it just kind of gives it a, a more natural feel to it. We'll see how I feel at the end on that. So I've got all these walls uh, skimmed now. I've got them sanded down and primed. These are gonna get wallpaper in here. So these are ready to go for wallpaper. And essentially that's all I've done. Oh, I also built this, um, this little appliance pedestal. So the washer and dryer will sit on that. It'll get wrapped in finished wood and then that thing will be good to go. But like I said, I'm down to my last row on the shiplap install. And you can see I've got a unique situation here. I've got these rafters poking out of the wall because this is getting closer to the roof line. So there's nothing I could really do about that. So instead of trying to hide that, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight it and I'll show you what I mean. So for my last row of these shiplap boards, I actually had to cut them individually like this because they need to fit in between these rafters. Now, where I have these notches out around this rafter, I'm gonna hide that because what I'm gonna do, the whole idea of this is this shiplap ceiling is trying to replicate that this is the subfloor on the second floor. At least that's the idea. I really like the way that exposed joists and framing look. So that's what I'm going for. So I'm actually going to put a beam right here I'm not going to use just framing lumber though, I'm going to put a piece of ash right here going across to recreate the look of each one of these joists 24 inches on center. And how I'm going to fix this, because this will still be exposed once I put that ash beam right here, I'm going to actually wrap it in veneer um, the same ash. So it'll actually look kind of like the house was framed in ash. So hopefully when I go to sell this house, I can show people, hey, this whole house is framed in ash wood like hardwood, so, you know, that's why the price increased by a million. And I think overall this is gonna look really neat. It's gonna be like, kinda like a coastal look, is the look I think of when I think of whitewash and, you know, really light colored woods. So that, that ash beam will actually be nailed right into this and it'll hide all of these nails, it'll hide all of these butt joints right here on the shiplap boards and then that veneer will just wrap around and tie into it. I think it'll look pretty sweet.
So one other option I considered on how to handle this exposed framing right here was to build a box beam, which is just a U-shaped beam out of three pieces of lumber and cap it like that. But I ultimately decided on the idea that I already told you of putting it next to it and veneering this because it would be a little more odd and quirky. And I'm trying to do things that are a little, a little odd because I don't want this to look so just factory and polished off. So hopefully the idea works really good. It, it sounds cool in my head, um, but I guess the vision is there, but we'll have to see it in reality. But that, that was another option I considered. All right, guys, I wasn't supposed to do this, but here's a sneak peek at the inside of the house. I was supposed to show you this during the tour, but I can't help myself. So I've got some big plans for this whole staircase right here. We're gonna Windsor one the heck out of that, but that'll be coming. But back to our laundry room, you can see we've got our whitewash boards all installed up there now. We've got our fixture centered right in the middle of one of those boards. And we've got basically full boards all the way across. I had to rip these last ones that I just put in down to six inches. So I actually ripped this one down to six inches too. And you can see it pretty much looks like a full board there. So pretty sweet look overall. So now let's get to one of the funner parts and that would be the beams. And one of the main reasons I've been trying to kind of hold off on doing any projects until I got my combination machine and bandsaw is because of what we're about to do right now. So I just went to the lumber yard and picked up these eight quarter pieces of ash and I got a piece of uh, four quarter over there as well. And you can see they're pretty, pretty rugged. This is how lumber usually comes and you got to mill it down. And uh, if I had my combo machine, table saw, joiner, planer, this would be no big deal. I could run this stuff through no problem at all. But I don't, as you know, because I keep saying it. So <laughs> we're just going to try to smooth this up with my Bosch handheld planer. <laughs> so it's going to be this handheld Bosch planer right here against this eight quarter rough ash. But the problem is this planer blade is only about three inches long and this material right here is just over five inches so i'm gonna have to make multiple passes at this and if there's any mill marks in it which i'm like 100 percent sure there's going to be after i pass this with this small blade i'm just going to sand those out but i should be able to clean this up pretty good because i don't like this rustic look for these beams because that that ceiling in there with the whitewash already I think it just might be too much. So I want these to be just super smooth as possible. looking pretty good I need to get these these are actually really deep I tried to find boards without those but all of them had them they're like he said they were chain marks they're like lifted up by a chain at the mill I don't know but I'm gonna keep doing 16th inch passes till I get this thing super smooth all right guys so about five passes with the planer. I know I said I was taking off a 16th of an inch earlier. It was actually a 64th, which is probably good because that, that might be too much for it to bite off at one point. But check this out. I got this thing looking pretty freaking smooth. I got a couple of mill marks that I need to feather in with the sander. But overall, I could probably get away with doing it this way, which is great because that means I can proceed with this project. So here's our after. This is what we have now and then this is what we had before. Pretty, pretty big difference there. So the easy part is going to be milling up this edge because the planer obviously can cover that with one pass. So this thing will clean up pretty smooth.
All right, guys, I am pretty much done with this first board. I still gotta sand it and feather out my mill marks a little bit, but look at that grain in that ash right there. That is absolutely beautiful. Can you imagine how big this tree was? It's just, just an amazing piece of natural beauty, I gotta say. So I've got that side done, I've got the edge done, and then I've got this back side done. So I'm gonna throw some clear on these after I sand them. Just look real natural, just a real low gloss, probably like a satin or something like that. And I think that up against that whitewash um, shiplap is gonna be pretty sweet. Next step, I'm gonna rip these down. I know I said earlier that they were a little more than five inches. They're actually a little more than six inches. So I'm gonna run them through and get them closer to five inches. So they kind of look like two by sixes. And I'm gonna see if this job site table saw is up for the challenge. I just put all the boards up here to start sanding and I just thought about something. I'm probably just gonna cut these down five inches over what their final dimensions are gonna be. So that room is five foot, 60 inches. I'm gonna cut all these boards to 65 inches because I have a lot extra here and I don't wanna just be needlessly sanding something that's not even gonna be used. Okay, so we've got our beams milled up here, cut roughly to size and length and they look good. I'm, I'm really happy with the results we got just using what we have. Now, before we measure and cut these, there's one more thing I wanna do and that's just pass over these edges with a low angle block plane because this 90 right here, I don't really like how perfect that is. So I kinda of just wanna just pass it a couple times and just take off a little, little bit of that edge there. And I could have done this with the sander, but it's just a little hard to be consistent with the sander. If I pass it with this, you can see those shavings are like the same consistency. And one of the reasons I like to cut materials longer than the exact measurement at the time is because when you're sanding, when you're milling, when you're running stuff through a joiner, there's a big chance that, uh, or a planer actually, there's a big chance you could get like chatter marks or maybe even snipe um, just based off operator error. Like if I'm feeding something through a table saw and I don't get it exactly right at the beginning or the end, well that part eventually gets cut off anyways versus if you're doing it with the exact size material that's already cut to size, there's a big chance you can make a mistake. And even with this, like if I don't start the pass exactly on the edge and I go in a little bit, you'll see that. But just something to think about. And I've also marked all these, what side the ceiling's gonna go, cause that's that table saw side that has those burn marks. Beam one, see how we did. Uh. 
И... It's just right there. There's like a hump right there. Mm -hmm. So that will probably continue the rest of the way. See, I'm okay with like that gap right there, but this one I'm gonna try to pull down a little bit because that's just it's a little much. If this was exposed framing, you wouldn't caulk all that anyways. So we can just bring that down a little bit. And I'd be pleased with it. So, but we're getting really tight joints up against these walls. Check this out. You can see how crisp that looks. Here's that first one. All right. Oh, that sucker's hot. I've got a little bit of glue right here. I can just roll this little plug around in. There we have our four beams in. I got one I gotta put in over there. I'm gonna have to uh, cut a mortise out where that uh, rafter is so I can hide it. And then I've got to veneer all these other ones, which I wanted to do today, but it's getting kind of late. And I got good news. Look at this, they just sent me this from the shipping company. That's my bandsaw. That's another picture of the bandsaw. And that is Another picture of the bandsaw. There's the combination machine. Combination machine. It left today. So it'll be in the Dallas area next week. And then we got to rent a trailer and go pick it up because they don't actually bring it to your house. They take it to like a, like a hub or something like that, like a shipping place. Other than that, guys, this is coming along pretty good. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. But other than that, next video will be back in here doing something, I'm sure.